Good morning. Amen, amen, amen. And welcome to Higher Calling Church. Good morning. Bless the Lord. We're so, we're so thankful. You know we have all finished Thanksgiving, and I know you all had a great time. I'm looking at your beautiful faces. God is so good. He is so good. Amen. Amen. And welcome our Facebook family. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we would that you would be blessed on today. And go ahead, family, get your phones out. And go ahead and click on the Higher Calling page, the Higher Calling app, because God is calling us higher. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So this morning, we'll go ahead and open up with prayer on today, for God is an awesome God. And I want to start with a, a passage of scripture on today. And we're coming from Psalms 7 and 1. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. I like this part, and it goes on to say, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire of his temple. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that is why we're here today. Oh, God, for the rest of our days, we will inquire of the Lord in his temple. My God. So, God, we come today just worshiping your name, Father. We bless you on today, God. We give you glory. We give you the honor, Father. For you are beautiful, Lord God. Oh, you are beautiful, Lord. So we bless you today, Jesus. We thank you today, Jesus. We thank you for all that you've done on this week, God, for this week of Thanksgiving. But we come giving you Thanksgiving every single day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for salvation, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for covering our families, Lord God. We thank you, God, for keeping us, Father, for you are a mighty God, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for fixing every circumstance, God, in every situation, Lord God. We thank you, Father. And Father, for those, Lord God, that may be going through right now, in this very hour, Lord God. Oh, we thank you, Father, that you're fixing their situation, Lord God, that you're rising them up, God, Lord God, above all the noise on today, Father. So we bless you in this house, God. We give you glory. We give you the honor, Father. We thank you that you watch over your word to perform it, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that your words say that you will never leave us nor forsake us, God. So if there's anyone out there, Lord God, in social media land, Lord God. And you feel like, oh, you are all alone. Let me tell you that God is with you. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He has you right in his hands. So he knows where you are. He knows your address. Uh, we thank God on today. Lord, we bless you, Lord God. We lift you up on today. Father, have your way in this house, God. Set the atmosphere, Father. Father, like only you can for miracles, God, for signs, God, for wonders, God. We are just that crazy to believe, God, that you're still doing miracles, God. You're still doing wonders, God, and you're still giving signs, God. So we bless you on today, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do in this house, God. We thank you for what you're doing in the lives of those that are watching on today. So we bless you on today. We give you glory, God. We give you the honor on today, and we magnify your name. We praise you, God, for your name is above every name, Father. Your name is is above sickness, Lord God. Your name is above 
sugar diabetes. Your name is above cancer, Lord God, and your name is above depression, God. So we got to look to you on today, God. We don't look to anyone else. We don't look to the left. We don't look to the right. But we look up from whence coming our help on today. So, Lord, we bless you. We give you glory and the honor. Oh, God, saturate this place on today, Father. Have your way, Lord God, like only you can, Father. Move by your spirit, Father. But you don't need anything but our hearts. So we give our hearts to you today, God. We lay them, God, as a sacrifice unto you on today. So have your way on today. We bless you on today. We give you glory and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord on today. Bless his name on today. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Can we do a little bit better than that for being in the house of God on today? Can we do just a little bit better than that, y'all? Hallelujah, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's a great God, he's a mighty God. He's so faithful, I'm so grateful to be in the house of God on today. With all the strength that I do have today, I say thank you to God for waking me up another morning and starting me on my way. Amen. Are y'all grateful to be in the house of God on today? Yes, 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 yes. So we're going to do corporate worship today. I'm going to need y'all help this morning because I'm not in full voice, but I'm still going to give it all that I got. Amen. Amen. So that means clapping of the hands, stomping of the feet the fruit of your lips and singing with me today amen yeah, yeah, yeah.
yeah, is a God. Just think about those words and sing it with me. You're the name, you're the name. together for God on today.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we give God some praise right yes. there? Can we give him some glory right there? For being a great God. Can we take a moment? Can we take just a fraction of our day to give him glory and honor? Because he gives us all the time. But can we take a fraction of our day all right. to bask in his glory and magnify his name? Hallelujah. Don't stop there. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. So y'all know this next song. It's hallelujah and it's an anthem. And we're going to sing it together. Amen. Amen. And today, I want us to do something different than just singing. And as a singer, it's so easy to say this. <laughs> but I want us to actually think about what we're saying instead of just repeating after me. And just think back on the times that God has proven himself continuously even when we did not deserve that grace and mercy because we've known what we've done behind closed doors the things that we've said behind closed doors the things that we didn't even say but that was in our heart so can we take a moment to think back and retrospect yes. and thank God for keeping us and for us being here thank you Jesus and not just being here, but being here in the soundness of your mind. Thank you, Jesus. Because there was plenty of times where we could have lost it. And where we almost did lose it. All right. But he stepped in and he saved the day. All right. And it's not, I'm not saying this as a stereotypical thing either. No. Or a church jargon. Matter of fact, I'm just going to take a minute, just Don't a quick second to testify because not a lot of people know this about me because I'm such a bright spirit and when I'm around my family, especially being back home, y'all see the smiles on my face, you see the joy, and with me singing, you're like, wow, Trin, you bless me, but guys, there are some Sundays where I was like, Lord, all right. I'm going to need you to give me the strength because I don't think I could do it today. But I stand here and say thank you, God, so much. Because there were times, there were times, y'all, where I was suicidal. And we, we go keep it a book, amen. All right. Yeah. <laughs> In church 100, 100. from the age of like 12. And I'm 20 now. Wow. And I still have to fight. So that's why even today, when I don't have a full voice, I'm still going to give him the fullness of praise. Woo! I'm still going to honor him and praise him and thank him because I could not be here. Come on. But I'm here. And he saved me. And he's still saving me because it's still a fight. It's still a fight, but you know what? I'm not going to give up. Don't do it. And I'm not going to give in. Because I know that there's greater on the other side of this suffering. Amen. I just had to say that real quick. <laughs> so I'll just start with the chorus. Hallelujah. You have won. Can sing with me since I don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. You have won it all. You have. And death could not hold. Yes, y'all. Cause you are. And you'll see it in. Can we 
sing it again. Sing a little louder, y'all.
is risen. He's not dead. He is risen. He's not dead. I don't have to go to no psychic because he's alive and well. My God is risen. He is risen. He's risen in me. He's risen in me. He's risen in you. He's alive and well. He hasn't gone nowhere. He's alive and well. He hasn't gone nowhere. He is alive and well. He's not going nowhere. He is alive and well. I feel that. He's not. He won't leave you no forsake ya. 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 He won't leave you no forsake He won't leave you no forsake He won't leave you no. But he was right there. He was right there. He was right there. By my bedside. He was right there. Hallelujah. He was right there. He was right there. When my heart was aching. When my heart was burning. He was right there. He was right there. He was right there when I wanted to end it all. He was right there. He was right there. He was right there. He was there when you were sick. He was there when you were burdened. He was there when you were hurting. He was there. His presence was there. Your presence was there. You were me. Feel that you wrap me in your arms. I don't know who needs this, but he's wrapping you in his arms. He's wrapping you in his arms until he fulfills that promise he made you. He's wrapping you in his arms until you have the baby. Hallelujah. Until you get the house. Hallelujah. Until you get the promotion. He's wrapping you in his arms. Just stay right there and pray. Fast 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 and pray. He's got you in his arms. He won't leave you. No forsaken. He's got you in his arms. He's got you in his arms. Our God is risen. He is alive. He won the victory. He reigns on high. Our God is risen. He is alive. He won the victory. He reigns on high. 
your hands. Come on. Come on, everyone, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come on. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. Come on over, Dr. Getty. Come back over, Trinity. Come back over. God is alive and well. Come on, open your mouth and just say, God is alive and well. This time I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think about what you're saying. Come on, just for a moment and think about that. God is alive and he's well able. Come on, say that God is alive and he is well able. Come on, say it, to do anything but fail. Come on, encourage, say it, to do anything but fail. Now from that place, open your eyes and give God the best hand of praise that you can in the room. Come on. Oh, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. All right, I want you to do me a huge favor. I want you to leave your seat and find at least four people, four people. And you give them a fist bump, an elbow bump, or just a wave and just get up on them and say, man, I'm believing God for you. Come on, go tell them. I'm believing God for you. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. I am believing God for you. I'm coming into agreement. I'm releasing in faith with you that God will bring that thing to pass, open up that door. Come on, make the pathway straight for you. I believe that God's going to give you clarity. Come on, I believe that God's going to give you wisdom. I believe that God's going to give you connection. I believe that God has gone before you already concerning that thing that you have before him. If you believe that you agree with God, give him a good hand of praise. Come on, come on. Make noise in this house, come on. Our God has won the victory and he reigns on high, amen. Go ahead and take your seats quickly in the presence of the Lord. You can put that mic down. I want you to come back over here and stand with me. How many of you love the Lord today? Show some sign. Come on. Oh, come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. <laughs> next Wednesday. Everybody say next Wednesday. Make sure I got my days right now. Hold on just for a second. I'm saying next Wednesday. I know. All right. I got Dr. Gatter behind me. She said, no, next Thursday. Next Thursday, it will be 28 years that I've been blessed to be married to this woman. And uh, you, you, you talking about how the Lord will train you and teach you uh, what love is. Uh, it's not an emotion. It is a principle. Come on, look at somebody say, love is a principle. It, it really is. It really is. That's not my sermon, but love is a principle. And our daughter standing here is a reflection uh, of that love. Uh, watch this, for better or worse. Amen. Amen, amen. And so we, we are, we're grateful to see God preserve our family. Amen. Amen. No, no, nobody is exempt. Nobody's exempt from what life can do in a relationship. I need real people to talk back to me. I said I need real people to talk back to me. All right. You, you come to discover some things about you that you never knew before in the context of a relationship. And so I thank God for Trinity holding on and trusting God. Y'all give God a hand of praise for my daughter.
Uh, and yes, I heard her. I'm, I'm not shocked that she would speak to the nature of suicidal ideation thoughts of wanting to give in to struggles and troubles of life. Uh, you'd be surprised who's sitting right next to you uh, that may have thought about it this week. Don't get quiet on me. Somebody say amen. Uh, but thank God for his keeping power. I'm going to try that again. Thank God for his. I got a real witness in the back. I'm going to try it again. Thank God for his keeping. His keeping power. Uh, and so here's what I want to do uh, very quickly. Uh, before we uh, get into the message, what we're going to do today before my daughter leaves, I want to sow a seed into her. Um, we have people that we pay to come and do praise and worship. And she's not on uh, the list uh, to get paid. And each time she comes, Dad, I got you. Yeah. Have y'all been blessed each time that she comes? She not only sings, but she ministers and she she pushes uh, that you, you, get, you get your touch, you get your impartation. So before she leaves, everybody repeat after me, before she leaves today, we're going to be intentional to sow a seed into her. I believe in you, Trinity. And you know, we talk. Um, my daughter tell me, Daddy, you're really my best friend. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Let's get that clear, both of us. I knew it was going to pop off of here, but uh, anyway, we all got our relationships, and so we thank God for Here's what I want to do. I want to have First Lady share some, uh, some words with you guys, and I want to get right into the word of the Lord this morning. God's given me something for everybody in this building. Somebody say amen. Are y'all ready to receive the word? Y'all give a lot of hand praise for Trinity. We love you, baby. I'm going to bless you before this over. Dr. Get. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I just thank God for being here on today. I thank God for almost 28 years. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. I say God is faithful. Hallelujah. I don't know your story, but my story is he's faithful. Amen. And so, you know, um, God proves himself through our lives. Amen. And so if you don't know him uh, to be a healer, then... God will prove himself and you'll be sick and he'll show you how he heals. If you don't know him to be a deliverer, then God will have you bound by something and he will show you how he can deliver you. And so when you hear people giving testimonies, I know you may not be able to relate to every single thing they're saying, but by faith, go ahead and clap so you, you'll have your own one day. Amen. It's like, I believe you. You don't have... God, you don't have to show me. I believe what she's saying, amen? You know, because sometimes God will take you through so that you can have your own testimony. And I just thank God for all that he's done. We all have a testimony, and if we don't have one, we all have one, but sometimes we don't realize um, the magnitude of our testimony. We don't realize the depth of our testimony. We don't realize what we've been through and how God's going to use it to reach. It's far reaching. When God does something in your life, it's never anything small. Every single thing God does is far reaching. And so I, we can't always see the how far God testimony that he gives us reaches. Hallelujah. And so you have to keep living. You have to keep living and God will show you how that very thing that seemed like it was so crushing, that very thing that seemed like it was going to take you out, how God will use it to reach from generation to generation to generation and then you'll realize it was not just about you. Hallelujah. It was about generations. Hallelujah. 
And so I just thank God for all of the testimonies he's given us and how, you know, he took us through the storm and we lost our house in the flood and we was homeless overnight, hallelujah. And I felt like Mary because I next week I found out I was pregnant with Trin and I'm like, we don't have anywhere to live where I'm going to lay my baby's head, hallelujah. And you don't know how it feels when you don't have a place to lay your child's head unless you've ever been in that moment unless you've ever been in that moment you really don't know the depth and then now when I look back in retrospect as pastor said for 28 years and I see the ups and the downs the mountain highs and the valley lows all the different turns and transitions that God has taken us through. And it was all so that we could stand here today and tell you that he is faithful. Amen? That he is faithful. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you will go through, hold on. Hold on. Hallelujah. When, you, when it seems very dark, just hold on because God is always there. He is faithful. Hallelujah. And that's my testimony on today. God is faithful. I thank God for pastor putting up with me for 28 years and me putting up with him for 28 years. And you know, as somewhere in between, you just make a decision. You know what? We just going to grow old together. You know what I'm saying? You just make a decision. You know what? It's been this long. We just going to grow old together. And so how do you grow old? We can grow old gracefully, lovingly, joyfully, or angry, or mad, or bitter. It's how you choose. It's a choice every day. You know, when you wake up in the morning, you make a choice. How do I embrace this day? Do I embrace it with joy even though I don't always see everything around me doesn't look joyful? It's really a choice you make every day. So I want to challenge all of us during this season, during this season of loss, there's been a lot of loss. During this season of loss, God is still faithful. The word of God says, in all things give thanks. For such is the will of God concerning you. Amen. God bless you. Let's give God a hand to praise. All right, we've made it available for you already on the overhead uh, for you to uh, give a love gift to Trini. And then we're going to also make it available on our live for those who have been blessed by her ministry down through the years. Uh, I've got a video, Albert, of my daughter. I think she was whole. Oh, my God. Probably five or somewhere around there singing. We may have to find that video for singing Amazing Grace. Y'all go ahead and stand to y'all feet. We're going to get into the scripture. We're going to read the word of God in honor as we stand to our feet. Amen. I want you to go to Old Testament, the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40 uh, and at verse number 31 is our key text. And we're going to read it from the Amplified Version. Amen. And after we've read that together, Amen. You can take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, uh, Amplified Version. And I, I want all of us to read this together. Hopefully you can see that. Can you see that? Y'all talk to me. Say yes or no. Yes, got a few yes, not too many no's. That's good. On the count of three, let's read that together. One, two, three, read. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising towards the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. And the church said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can take your seats in the presence of the Lord. The grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And the church said, amen. amen. Um, I see, um, amen, Sister Linda here with her two wonderful sons. Uh, give God a hand of praise for Sister Linda. Uh, 
Um, I'm not going to start calling out all these testimonies, but um, there's, there's so many testimonies in this room. Amen. Look down your row and just tell somebody, I do have a testimony. Yeah, come on. Look at somebody else and just tell them, I do have a testimony. And uh, Sister Linda was uh, just over our house a couple of days ago uh, visiting, and uh, she began to testify uh, about her eldest son. Um, I have dubbed him to be Black Jesus. Uh, yeah, because he's... The first time she showed me a picture of, of her son, I said, that's black Jesus. Uh, I mean, just uh, a handsome young man, uh, just by virtue of what I saw in his, uh, his, his face, uh, but his spirit. Uh, his spirit is what caught me uh, more than anything. Uh, there's something about the spirit of a man. I feel the Holy Ghost already. Something about the spirit of a man, the Bible declares, it's what sustains a man. Uh, it's in that text in Proverbs, speaking to the idea of Sister Glenda, that if when a man becomes sick, if his spirit is strong, he'll live past the sickness. He'll live through the sickness. And uh, this young man has faced a many of things, being as young as he is, he's still alive. Amen. There's something about, Mary, the, the idea of a, a, a spirit of a man being broken. I'm going to get into the text. I've, I've got a message for you. But it's something about when a spirit is broken. The Bible declares a wounded spirit, who can bear it? When, when Mr. Glenda, within you, and you assess all of your attempts to make right wrongs, or to live through and beyond the wrongs done to you, and you are searching for answers, God, why can't I rise? And it keeps, it keeps looking like life keeps finding a way to keep its foot on my back. God, I need you to get me up. Are y'all hearing me in here? You know, anointed or not, watch this, save or not. And that's why I love the book of the Ecclesiastics. It talks about how that all of us are like metaphors in terms of fish. We can all be caught in the net. It speaks to the idea of Tanika, this point in life where you didn't ask for what's coming to you, but it comes to you nonetheless. And you got to find a way. Somebody said, I got to find a way. Trina, you got to find a way out. But here's the beautiful part I like about this, and then I'm going to get to this. Sometimes it ain't you finding a way out. It's sometimes it's God coming to get you out. That's your shout. Yeah. Sometimes it's God coming to get you out because you couldn't. I'm going to say it again. Sometimes it's God coming to get you out. Because you can get to a point in life where you don't even care anymore. Like, I don't care which way this go. I'm just, at this point, I'm just coasting because I don't know how to feel about where I'm at right now. I need real witnesses today. Are y'all here? For a very, very, very brief, very brief moment, I, I'm with you guys. I want to talk about pace and patience. I want, I want to talk to you about pace and patience. Just re repeat after me. Pace, pace. and patience. Good seeing you, Christian. All right. Pace and patience. Everybody just said pace, pace. and patience. Pace. Uh, my hope is that at the end of this, you'll realize that in the midst of the pace at which God is trying to get you to establish, and with the patience that it requires, you're going to come to realize you're getting stronger. You, you are getting stronger. Just prophetically, just speaking to someone's life, look at them and just tell them, you are getting stronger. Come on, tell them. Subtext, I want you to write down and have in your notes when you 
come back to this and to those that are following us online, I, I want you to pay close attention. First Corinthians chapter 15 and at verse number 58, first Corinthians chapter 15 at verse number 58, Paul is spending some time massaging in the hearts and the minds of the believers that their faith in God through Jesus Christ is not in vain and that there is a hope of resurrection, that there's a hope of finality, that there's a hope of God bringing to manifestation the expectation that can never be stolen from your life. He speaks to the idea of resurrection. Is resurrection meaning that because of the spirit of the Lord on the inside of you, as Paul addressed the church in Romans chapter 8, he says that that same spirit that dwelled in Christ, that quickened, which is to say made alive and brought him back alive from the grave, dwells in your body. It'll also make you alive. And so from the moment that you're saved, in the most technical sense, you have the spirit of God. Which is to say that you have the spirit, the Holy Spirit. The manifestation of the endowments, the gifts of the Holy Spirit is a whole nother matter. But the moment that you're saved, you got the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody say, I do have the Holy Ghost. That's not my sermon, but I just wanted you to understand that. But that power is inside of you right now. <laughs> oh, y'all lift your hands and just say, Lord, I think that it's inside of me right now. So the, the subtext, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15, says this. Pastor translation says, so now, beloved one, stand firm, stable, and enduring. Elder Shelby, he says, live your lives with an unshakable confidence. He says, we know that we prosper and excel in every season. Good God Almighty. When? Every season. Come on, walk with the preacher. When? In every season by serving the Lord because we are assured that our union with the Lord makes our labor productive with the fruit that endures. In the Gregorian calendar, as we know it, New Year's Eve, also known as Old Year's Day or St. Sylvester's Day in many countries, is the evening of the entire day of the last day of the year, December the 31st. The last day of the year is commonly referred to as New Year's Eve. In many countries, New Year's Eve is celebrated with dancing, eating, drinking, and watching or lighting fireworks. Some Christians attend watch night services. Y'all didn't know y'all been doing that. The celebrations really go and on past midnight into New Year's Day on January the 1st. More historically, St. Sylvester's Day is also known as Sylvester or the Feast of St. Sylvester. It's the day of the Feast of the Pope Sylvester I, a saint who served as Pope Bishop of Rome from 314 to 335. The medieval legend made him responsible for the conversion of Emperor Constantine. Among the Western churches, the feast day is held on the anniversary of St. Sylvester's death which is December 31st, a date that since the adoption of the Gregorian calendar has conceded with the New Year's Eve. If y'all still with the preacher, just say amen. amen. It is also understood this, Dr. Getty, that it's stated as numerous confessions Christians have long thought of Constantine the Great as the supreme advocate who in essence was the savior of Christianity it is to this man that most of today's Christians body attributes the delivery of Christianity from Roman persecution, releasing them from the bondage of being outlaw religion, bringing them freedom from oppression. Christianity was now entering the realms of position. Somebody say position. Feel the Holy Ghost. Stay with me today. Bringing them the realms of position, power, and wealth. Repair to me, position, power, and wealth. It says further, for its leaders by means of Constantine. However, in 313 CE, before coming here, if you will, Roman Emperor Constantine the Great ended all the persecution and declared toleration for Christianity. 
Later that century, Christianity became the official state religion of the empire. This drastic change in policy spread this relatively new religion to every corner of the empire. You've got to follow this. This is important. In fact, I want to mention to you just 10 major shifts that took place for the children of Israel and then also the Gentiles that became Christians that were up under such persecution, Mr. Glenda, that they in the 10 periods that I'm about to mention experienced such hardship, many of them to the point of being killed for their belief. They were known as martyrs. Somebody say martyrs. The first one is Nero's persecution from 64, 68. It deals with the persecuted Christians by pointing them as arsonists of the great fire of Rome. The second one, Domitian's persecution from 90 to 96, oppressed under the accusation that all gods were angry because of Christians. Are y'all still here? Just say amen. Trajan's persecution, 98 to 117, persecuted Christians as felons for refusing to worship the emperor. Hadrian's persecution, 117 to 138, set up the status of the statues, if you will, of the emperor and other statues and forced to worship them. If Christians refused, they were executed. Even those who persecuted Christians were punished. Marcus Aurelius 116 to 180 persecuted the Christians by blaming them for all natural disasters such as pestilence, famine, and drought. Gave the corpse of the Christians as food for hungry dogs. Are y'all still in the room? Just say amen. I'll do one more. The last one, 10. Diocletian's persecution, 303 and 311, says the worst persecution that deprived the Christians of all their rights declared the four edicts against Christianity, forced the Christian soldiers to forsake their faith and executed them if they disobeyed, destroyed church buildings, burned the Bible, banned worship, and expelled Christian from public office. In the book of Isaiah, what we're looking at in that era is a time in which the children of Israel were experiencing like persecution. They were up under the Babylonian empire subjugation. They were people, they were oppressed because they were brought to this state because of their idol worship of forsaking God, Yahweh, Jehovah. But God had a promise still waiting for them. I need you to tell somebody, I still have a promise waiting for me. Come on, walk with me. Look at somebody else and just tell me, I still have a promise waiting for me. And so God chooses key characters throughout history to raise them up, not to be on the outside looking in, Elder Shelby, but to be on the inside experiencing in concert the same set of circumstances. So that as God would give them word from heaven to tell the people that something was about to change, they also needed encouragement themselves. Make that plain to preacher. Those that pray for you don't think they don't have problems. Those that are preaching to you don't think that they don't have tribulations. We're all in this together. <laughs> Help me. Look at somebody and say, we're all in this together. Uh, but it happened that the time of this transition out of this trouble was coming to an end. And so what God was trying to get the prophet to say is for those that remain, I need you to get this word out. In essence, tell them to hold on because this day of trouble is about to be over. I'm speaking that now prophetically to everybody in this room. Wherever you have been up under the thumb or the heel of the devil, God wants me to tell you today, this is about to end. All right, let me speak that to somebody believe. I said, this is about to end. Tell somebody else that's got expectation. This is about to end. That when God determines that the season of your suffering is up, it's up. 
that, 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 that this particular cycle of issues that's been pervading in your life, crowding the space of you having joy and peace and clarity. Are y'all hearing me? I said, I'm about to bring this to an end. Everybody say the end. And so what God does, Tish, he begins to forecast, foretell prophetically what's about to happen on tomorrow. In other words, I need to begin to speak to you about what's about to manifest. That I want you to become more occupied in your thoughts and in your emotions and get enraptured with the desire about tomorrow. Somebody say tomorrow. That what God is saying, Dr. Gaddy, is I want you to fall in love with tomorrow and divorce the misery of today. I, I, I need you to get so convinced that I'm about to shift this in your life, you start preparing to celebrate. <laughs> Tell somebody, I'm going to prepare to celebrate. That's why I gave you the New Year's Eve. Nobody knows what's going to happen on January the 1st, but everybody is preparing like tomorrow is going to be different than what's going on today. That, that you've got to become so convinced prophetically in your spirit about what God has said, you start preparing that God is bringing wholeness. You start preparing like God bringing peace. You start preparing. Tell somebody, you better prepare. Women do it all the time. You engage don't mean you're married. Back up, get on that train. Yeah. You being engaged don't mean that you're married. But you start getting all your stuff together. Y'all help me look at somebody with an attitude and say, you better get your stuff together. Yeah, you better go and open up another bank account like you know the thousands to the millions are coming. Y'all quiet. You, you better get your LLC like you know you're going to get the loan and that it is going to come through. You, you better write up your business plan like you know people are going to join with you and connect with what God wants to do through your life. Tell somebody, prepare yourself. Y'all quiet. I said, look at somebody and tell them, prepare yourself. God's not speaking empty words. When God begins to speak future, he wants you to be convinced about what you need to do right now. Oh, let me back up and say it again. When God begins to speak to you about your future, he wants you to become convinced about what you need to change right now. Lift your hands to the Lord and say, God, give me an anointing to change right now for what's coming tomorrow. Another one that I love about this is in the book of the Joshua chapter 3 where the Lord begins to tell Joshua, go among the people and tell them to sanctify themselves because tomorrow, somebody say tomorrow. Somebody shout out tomorrow. He said, tell them to sanctify themselves because tomorrow I'm going to do wonders among them. But you don't get to experience tomorrow if you don't sanctify today. Woo, help me, Holy Ghost. Tell somebody, I got to sanctify today to get ready for tomorrow. This sanctification means that you begin to separate. You begin to move stuff out of the way you you it's like moving into a new house god tells you i'm gonna bless you with new furniture so why would you pack why would you put in the u-haul that stanky couch y'all looking strange why, why, why would you put that broke down refrigerator god said i'm trying i'm gonna give you everything new i don't want you taking nothing old into the new place Move all that stuff out the way. Tell somebody, I got to move it out the way. God is trying to provoke them to get a certain mentality 
about the shift that's about to take place. And so what the Lord tells him, he says, I, 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 but those who wait, th those who what? <laughs> th those who what? Some of y'all are messing around with that word, believing that it just simply means to be still. No, 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 no. Uh, the word wait in Hebrew is kavah. Everybody say kavah. Hey, y'all Hebrew students now. Yeah. The word kavah means to twist. It, it means to stretch. It means there is tension. In other words, God is pulling something. That, that what God is telling them to do is, I need you to position yourself. Tell somebody, I'm positioning myself. I'm testifying to my own self what God's about to do in my life. Right now in my studio, I'm working on another piece that's going to be sold for more than $10,000. Y'all jealous. Let me pack up. I, I'm preparing right now. Tell somebody, I'm preparing right now. M Minister Tristan, each time I go into my studio and someone commissions me to do a piece, Albert, I'm trying to paint as if I'm selling it to millionaires. Because each time I realize if I keep positioning myself with a mentality to execute in excellence, my gift, it makes room for me. Hold on. My gift, it makes room for me. Y'all come get the camera. Y'all move the camera over here. Y'all do whatever you got to do. I'm trying to get y'all to see this this morning. My gift, it does what? My gift, it does what? Okay, Elder Shepherd, come up here real quick, real quick. Christian, come up here real quick, real quick. Albert, come up here real quick. Black Jesus, come up here real quick. Come on. It's like, he didn't call that boy Black Jesus. Stand on this side, face him. Stand on that side and face him. Come on. On this side, yeah. You right here? Uh-huh. You right here? Yes, sir. Come on, you right here? Stand right there. All right. Let me have, uh, come on, Tish. Come on, Trinity. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Real quick, Chris. Let's go, children. I need them to get this. I need to get this. All right. Now, I, I want you all to understand something that when God gives you a prophetic word, yes, sir. somebody say a prophetic word. A prophetic word. When, when, when God gives you a prophetic word, yes, these are things that it seems like it's in the way. Yes, sir. But when God gives you that word, what he's trying to activate is not only what he said, but what he sowed inside of you. You need to get it because when God speaks a word on the inside of you, that's the thing that he's going to use in concert with what he said to bring about the manifestation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when God speaks that word to Victor, Victor, I have already spoken over your life that I'm bringing you into the category of millionaires purchasing your work. So as I'm moving forward, what's on my left and my right, doubt, Fear, yeah. insecurity, childhood trauma. Are y'all hearing me in here? People trying to stop you and block you because they're jealous of you. Some folk that want you, don't want you to get connected to the right people in the right places. But God said, I'm going to cause your gift to make room for you. In other words, each time you obey God, authority in your gift pushes this stuff out of the way. Each time you write another page, it pushes it out of the way. Each time you give your testimony in company, it pushes it out of the way. Each time you trust God, even with tears in your eyes, it pushes it out of the way. Even when you find your family don't want to support you, it pushes it out of the way. When like you don't have enough money in the bank to get the, it pushes it out of the way. And as long as you keep working your gift, God brings you right to your appointed place and time. Y'all sit down, sit down. So, so here it is, here it is. So what God is doing in Isaiah is he's telling them, I know you've been waiting. But the kind of waiting is, I know you've been in a stretch. I know you've been going up against tension. People that it looked like they would agree with you look like you just can't get nobody to really agree. But God said, I'm stretching you. 
Tell somebody, God is stretching me. And, and, uh, and the more, Albert, that God stretches you, watch this, don't go back to the same position. Don't, don't go back to the same mentality because you don't fit more, no more. You don't fit. Just tell somebody, I don't fit anymore. I, I'm sorry. I, I don't fit in the same mentality that I had 10 years ago. God's been stretching me as I've been waiting. Another testimony, Elder Shelby is in this room. The Lord stretched him when he moved him here. Now, how many years ago? Come on real quick. Eight years ago. Eight years ago, the Lord stretched him. He lives in Jefferson City. That's his hometown back there in Missouri. No shade against Jefferson. God bless your heart if you're watching. But when God brought him to Houston, Texas, he realized we cannot go back. Now watch this. There's some people that remember you from where you come from. And they missed you from where you used to be. And some folks is going to want you to come back. But you got to tell them, I've been waiting too long to go back where I used to be. Shout out of your mouth. I don't fit. I don't fit. Shout out. I don't fit. So don't think it's strange, Trinity, when you get your degree that certain relationships don't fit no more. Why? Because God been stretching you. It's just certain things that when God increases your life, you cannot fit there any longer. And so he says, I want you to understand this. He says, those that wait, those that what? So now you understand when God tells you, if you've been waiting, I've been stretching. If, you, if you've been waiting, I've been putting tension. If you've been waiting, I've been putting pressure. And all the while, what you think has been something to destroy you has really been the thing that's been making you. God had to shift your mentality in your waiting. Lift your hands and thank God that he shifts you in your waiting. Come on, I mean it. Lift your hands, lift your hands. Thank God that he's been shifting you in your waiting. Somebody say, in my waiting. Now, 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 Mary, in this, in this waiting hat, there's been tears. Josh, there's, there's been anger. There's been disappointment. But God has still been stretching me. Still been making me for what's to come. Look at what he does, and I'm almost done with you. He says, those that wait upon the Lord, they have the, the expectation, they look for and hope in him. God says, you're going to gain new strength. Oh, uh, y'all not hearing this. Prophetically, God is telling you for what's going to happen on tomorrow, new strength is already there for you. In other words, God said, I'm going to give you your second wind. Stand to your feet and receive the anointing of the second wind. Come on. Come on, stand, stand. Stand. To your feet for the second wind anointing. Somebody say second wind. Hold it right there. I'm good. I said, I'm, go I'm going to renew your strength. But about declares that he gives strength to those that have no might. And he increases strength to those that look like they're about to faint. And many of you have to ya. And many of you have been on the verge of fainting. But God said, I'm telling you today. Somebody say today. Put some authority on that and say today. Because I'm giving you anointing divine strength today. I'm empowering you right now for your tomorrow. He says I will renew their power. Shut up. Lift your hands. Come on. Come on. Albert, this power is not just power of some tingling emotion. It's talking about the power of your ability. That God's about to renew your capacity. He's going to touch your mind to think sharper. He's going to give you clarity to think forward. He's going to cause you to see the vision fully unfold. That you'll be able to see yourself on the other side of the project being completed. God said, I'm renewing your capacity. Huh. 
The God said, I'm stripping away exhaustion. Filling in the room in here. I'm stripping away exhaustion. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. God, thank you now for stripping away exhaustion. Come on, say, Lord, you can have it all. Come on, say it. Come on, say it again. Lord, you can have it all. And God is taking away the exhaustion that all of this stuff that looked like it piled on top of you and buried you up under weariness and heaviness. God said, I'm stripping that away. I'm renewing right now. I'm renewing right now. I'm renewing right now. I'm renewing right now. Right now. Open up your mouth and say, right now. Yeah. Moving faster. Come and give me, what, give me what I need. Come on, come on, come on. He says, watch this. They will lift up their wings. Come on, put your arms out here. Come on, put your arms out. Put your arms out. God is about to bring you into a season of visitations where you see from above. That you see from where? That, that, that it's, it's, it's no more lateral observation. God said, no, I'm going I'm to pull you up so you can see it. Somebody say, Lord, thank you for pulling me up. Come on, say it. Again, open your mouth. Go and say, Lord, thank you for pulling me up. Watch this, Jalen. In other words, God said, I'm about to change your perspective. I'm going to change your perspective. I'm going to cause you to see it the way I've always seen it. But you won't be operating from a level of discouragement. You won't be operating from a level of fear. You won't be operating from a level of confusion. You'll be operating from revelation. Lift your hands and say, Lord, thank you for the revelation. To see it differently. Come on, put your faith behind what you're saying. Don't just say it in words, Lord. Lord, thank you right now for the revelation to see this different. He said, they'll rise up close to God like eagles rising toward the sun. He says, they will run. They'll what? They'll what? They'll run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. Watch this, Mr. Glenda. The Lord is saying, you're going to receive the strength to arrive to your destination. I'm going to say this again. If you don't have no expectation, this ain't you. God said, I'm giving you strength to arrive. Somebody say to arrive. To get there. That God is giving you the anointing to break through to get there. I feel the Holy Ghost. You can move this now. The anointing to break through to get there. The anointing to what? The anointing to what? The anointing to what? I feel the Lord. Somebody say this week. This week, you're going to see the breaking. This week, somebody say this week. This week, you're going to see the breaking, getting you closer to the destination. Keep your hands lifted before the Lord. Holy God. The Lord wants me to tell you that this year is not going to end without the breakthrough. Ooh. Ooh. This year is not going to end without the breakthrough. Linda, I need you to come with your family. Come quickly. Come on, both of your sons. Come, come. Minister Josh, come on up here. Holy Ghost, Minister Trista, come on up here.
bring me that oil, Elder Shelby. things because God loves you and because of your steadfastness to not give up you could have gone the way of many men and women and said I'm done and left and let the chips fall where they may. But the Lord said, because of your steadfastness and his love for you, he is breaking the back of this spirit that wants to keep you in a cycle of startups. <laughs> startups. It's like great ideas and sometimes like inventions and stuff come to you and it's like you get the thing kind of start and get it going and then it's like somewhere in the middle there it's like and it's almost like the fire goes out and then the drive and you kicks in again and here comes another great startup and then Liken unto Jacob when he was out in the process of trying to find a well to dig. And, and each place that he came, he ran into one well that was called contention. And he ran into another well called strife. But then there was another place where he came to where the well looked like it would not be provided. But then the Lord spoke the word Rehoboth. The word Rehoboth means God has made room for us. And that every resistance that he kept encountering with every intent to dig a well, to draw water, that will be sustenance for the cattle and for family and for others in the tribe that could bring about the kind of agricultural increase in business so that they can enter into the market of trade. The Lord said, I'm opening up the doors for you to get in. It's breaking the cycle of the startups. I said, no, I'm breaking that spirit that's been keeping you in that cycle. And I'm opening up the doors. Somebody say the doors. And that's why at the point of this, your, of your life, the Lord said, I'm renewing your strength. Because it took a lot of strength just to get here. Help me, holy God. J just to get to this point in your life it took more strength than what people realize but the Lord said I'm going to renew your strength and you're going to have the strength that you need to arrive the anointing of arriving is on your family now <laughs> come on and bless God So here's what you do. You ask God for wisdom. Lord, how do we function in this new territory? Are y'all hearing this? God, how do we maximize the potential of this new territory? God, we want to we want to receive back pay. Somebody say back pain. I'm, I'm talking about for lost time. That, that you recover. I feel the Holy Ghost. That you do what? That, that an anointing, sir, rests on you to recover. I mean, to absolutely recover. 
that God is about to restore unto you the years that the palmer worm and the canker worm have come in to steal and take from you. You've already seen yourself in a whole nother status. God said, we're going to bring that into manifestation. Uh, thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord said, he's going to blow your mind. He said, I'm your husband, and I'm going to take care of you. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about surviving. You didn't already prove that you know how to survive. Bring me back my notes. Bring me back my notes. No, I remember the head talks about how the God said, I'm, I'm changing your status and I'm bringing you into position, power, and wealth. Uh, position, power. I got one up here talking already. Position, power, Do you believe this? Your son already there. Give that to me. Yes. Seven. Seven significant shifts over the next seven months. Mark it. Mark it in your spirit. Mark it in your head. Seven significant shifts over the next seven months. The Lord's going to be positioning you. Going to be building your power base. And you're going to find yourself coming into wealth. Whatever you do, don't forget God. Don't forget the vow that you made. Lord, if I ever get into a position where I'm set up, I want to help other mothers that are facing the same type of struggle that I've faced for years. Lord, if you'll just give me a chance. The Lord said he's going to do more than that. He's going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. It's like I see one of these like, look, store warehouses where you have stuff loaded with goods. And, and the Lord is going to so, so bless you. It's, it's, it's one where they're going to be able to come and you're going to ask, okay, how old? What size? Okay, we got you. And you're going to be able to give in, in boxes and loads of goods and resources to families that have been struggling because of your same testimony. It's gonna raise your family up. The Lord is about to make your family a storehouse. Gonna make your family a storehouse. You are being shifted already in the kingdom from being on the side of receiving. But God said, I'm changing your status today to being the lender. You're gonna be the giver. You're gonna be the giver. So I wanna pray for each of you by laying my hand on you. Do I have your permission to touch you on your head? I have your permission to do this? Yes? All right. Everyone, point your hands this way. We're trusting the Lord. Father, Banta show by Leki and I anoint you, sir, for transition. 
and that the grace and the healing the power of God would rest on you mightily. And that you make up for lost time. The Lord is giving strength to your entire body. Even now as you stand here to make up for lost time. You'll be able to fulfill it. You're going to help mom to complete it. It's going to be well. Somebody says it's going to be well. Thank you for covering and for strengthening. Thank you for holding him. There are absolutely angels that walks around this young man right here. Yes, God loves your family, but I'm telling you, God's got him so covered and protected. There's things that he hears and he sees that at some time somebody would think that he's crazy. He's not crazy. Those encounters at times with him being able to see in the spirit realm, that's the Lord. Father, I thank you that you cover him. And you shield his spirit. That no harm or no attack comes upon his mind. Keep him clear. Teach him the words of prayer spiritually. How to commune with you in a way, God that he releases more favor and doors of access to this household. We give you praise for it. Thank you for the release. Somebody say, Lord, we thank you for the release. I thank you for the release over this, your daughter, our sister. I thank you for the succession, the periods, the timings of transition, the seven, the seven, the seven. Everybody say the seven, the seven. Let the series of these sevens begin to unfold over her life. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Somebody bless the Lord for your brother and your sisters. Come on, bless the Lord for them real good. Come here, Christian. Yeah. Isn't it interesting when you know it? It's like I knew he was going to do it. Kind of felt it. There's a statement that people tend to say about certain individuals. Things like, He's a natural born leader. The Lord said they, they see you. I need everybody in the room standing. Now, th th this is word of wisdom to you as you're rising. Remember this for your son because he's rising. Rising. And they see it. It was about almost two years ago that I was in the spirit and I was rising so fast that while in the spirit the Lord sent an elder prophet and he came up on me so fast I was like where in the world did he come from and he told me he said 
you're too high. Come down. They see you up here. The instructions that were given to me was, you have to be careful the moves that you make as the favor is resting on your life. Don't mishandle it arrogantly. Don't mishandle it in being impulsive. God is so favoring you, Christian, in this rise that you're going to be given keys in terms of having conversation with people on the campus that have the power of the yes and the no's. And they're going to afford you to be the one to say, well, what do you think, yes or no? Some of these are coming to test you to see, I wonder what his heart is like. If we give him access to this kind of influence, I wonder what his heart is like. Pray for wisdom so that you can be the type of Solomon that when it's put before you, you judge right. <gasps> you do what? Well, we found out he did this. And according to our bylaws, this person's not supposed to be in this anymore. What do you think? Ask God to give you wisdom. And the more wisdom you operate in, more doors. Oh, man, I see a banquet that's about to happen. And your name has already been brought up as one that they want to come. Politiki and the Beshaya, Rosotila de Besho. This is not so much about secret society <laughs> as it is being a Daniel. The God will bring you into the courts where there's much knowledge. The tellings of the moves that impacts thousands to millions of people. So God is granting you access into some serious places. Somebody say serious places. So serious, in fact, the psalm will swear you to secrecy. What you heard, young man, in this room, don't you take it out of this room. But God's going to give you wisdom how to function in those courts. Because the one thing that God is doing is putting you in there as a voice of truth. A voice of what? That you be the one that when all the rest would lie, you tell the truth. And God said, I've got you covered. Because with the rise that's already happening, there are some that are already jealous. Yeah. I see two in particular that seem to be somewhat of friends, but the Lord said, I'm covering you from their malicious intents. No weapon. Oh, good God Almighty. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every line tongue, <laughs> God will condemn. So I pray protection around you today. That as you leave from this place, you leave with protection. Lift your hands to God. 
Come on, Elder Shelby, let me have that. You leave with protection. That the favor of Joseph, that you're not forgotten because of the wisdom and the counsel that you give, that you rise to such a position of influence, that you rise in wisdom, you rise in humility, you rise in discernment. And the anointing of a judge rests on you. That you judge rightly. That you judge rightly. That you judge rightly. And God, with this favor, keep your son, our brother Shilton, for every mission you have him on. We give you praise for it. I see this old room. This, in this old room, there's this huge desk. And I see you sitting behind it with your legs crossed. And it's like you've got a pen in your hand tapping on the desk. Christian, you talking about access to some serious influence. Stay humble. Stay humble. It is your protection. As you're in this elevation, this rise, it is your protection. This is my prayer for you. And as long as I live, my intent is to be a voice for you as a prophet in your life. Somebody give God a hand of praise for the gift. Somebody give God a hand of praise for the gift. This last thing I'm going to say to you, I'm going to let you go to your seat. God is going to give you turnkey anointing. Okay, what? That means you're going to be the person that has the final word of letting somebody in or not. Be careful. Don't let anybody influence you greater than God. Not even your mom. Let your greatest influence be the Spirit of God. And if you'll do that, you'll please the Lord and you'll bless your family. Serious influence, sir. Serious influence. Millions of dollar kind of influence. I pray protection over your life. Y'all give God a hand to praise for him. Come on, uh, Mr. Elsie, bring me your phone and your Bible. Oh, manda bishaya. Somebody say we're going in. Going in. If your hands to God. Yela na na mando bishaya. Rekul tambande bishaya ne bishaya. Bring that up. That's fine right where it is. Just bring that up. Lift your hands in this room. I need to hear you opening up your mouth. Come on, I've trained you for years. You know how to do it. Come on, let's go. Let's go. There it is. Utaya la mando boshi. 
Hey, come on, Come on over, Dr. Gaddy. Minister Trista, come on over. Minister Glenda, come on over. Come closer right here. Oh, my Hey, Come on, get in there. In the name of God, <laughs> Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Millions by now, and you know it. You should be at millions by now. She, but there's been one principality fighting you at the gate for years. Fighting you at the gate for years. Trying to block you from the millions. I hear a scream in the, in the spirit realm. And the scream is the demon. Being removed. Ah. <laughs> How? Somebody shout out, remove. I feel your Holy Ghost thank you now. Shout out again, remove. Shout it out again, remove. This next time, I want you to hold it. I want you to hold it. On the count of three, shout it out and hold it. One, two, three. God said, for your sake, I'm removing it. Because the vision 
It's too great. And you've been blocked. The Lord said, but I'm moving the blocks. The Lord said, I'm going to give you access. The wisdom and the counsel that you're about to function in. Through the word of God and the connections that he's about to bring you into. The Lord said, I'm about to bust this thing wide open. Yes, there is such a thing on the phone that you have called privacy setting. Is that right? Yes, sir. The Lord said, I'm giving you some things that I need you to hold in privacy setting. Watch this, both naturally and spiritually. Amen. You know what I told Mary and Joseph to do. I told them to go and hide the baby. They did not bring him back until he was 12 years old. Hey! You know the number 12 means government. It means it's ready to rule. God is bringing you to such a space that you're going to be ruling. I said, I'm giving you a seat at the table. I'll say it, Holy Spirit. The anointing to be in the midst of council men and council women. You'll be hearing about the next monies that's going to be released. For foundations. Oh my Betishi. Well, like certain funds were held up and blocked because of the systems of inflation, the Lord said, Stand still. I'm going to show you where the next stream is about to be open. And the anointing for these grants is about to step up for you. Oh, my Beshayala. The Lord said, I've got the hearts of your sons. And that one is kind of like in the middle, but he's big. The Lord said, I'm going to deal with that anger. I'm going to deal with that anger and I'm going to heal in the name of Jesus. Comes a season of such regulation in your household that the favor of an Abigail, of a Rebecca, of a Ruth, of an Esther are open unto you this day. The Lord said, fear not. Fear not the visitation. Oh, God, today. The Lord said, don't fear the visitation. Oh, my Bishia, don't fear the Bekian. The Lord said he's not going to let it make it over the waters. The curses, the curses that they've been trying to send over the water to you. They're being intercepted in the air. They're not going to make it. They're not going to make it to your door front door yes. the yes. 
You are shielded by the Lord. He is your shield and he's your buckler. Lord said, I'm going to give more than enough time to recover and to rebuild. Somebody say rebuild. Lord said, the renewing of strength is yours even now, even now, even now. The Lord said, come back to him. I see you at 2 o'clock. I see you at 3 o'clock. The Lord said, shout aloud. Open up your mouth and release the sword. Katushi. Release it. The Lord said, release it out of your mouth to cut the pathways completely down. You've You've always been a pioneer. <laughs> they hate the fact that it's a woman. Uh, but you've always been a pioneer. The Lord said, but the grace and the wind and the fire to blaze these trails is upon you. Move and don't let nobody stop you. Come on, Joshua ch chapter 1. No one will be able to stand before you. No one, the Lord says, no one. No, everybody say, no one. Daughter of God, the Lord said, no one, no one. Oh, my bishy. No one will be able to stand before you. Because there's too many, the Lord said, he's going to use you to be a blessing to. I say three houses. Oh, the Lord is about to set this thing up in such a way. The Lord said, I'm going to send solid help. And to give you access to move back and forth. We give you favor, God. We thank you for the favor. We give you honor and praise for the favor. We give you honor and praise for the favor. Yeah. Stay here. Yes. Come on. Elsie, I saw you um, <laughs> almost like a spiritual assassin. Uh, you're dressed like this for a reason. And uh, yeah, I play a game called Assassin's Creed sometimes, y'all forgive me. But I saw you almost dressed like the man that's in there. And as you were running through a valley of dry bones, you're like, God, all the bones are dry. Why? And the Lord said, I've given you a sword. There's been a spirit holding these people in place so long that they have become dry and withered. And it's your responsibility because you have the communication. Pastor asked you to bring your Bible and to bring your phone. This is your sword and your communication is prayer. And so as you walk through these valleys of bones, remember, you have the communication with the Father to cut these spirits loose and speak life to the bones just like Ezekiel did. So I don't know if you've been reading in Ezekiel chapter 37, but read the valley of the dry bones. And when God calls you to speak to dry bones in the valley, speak to them, but speak to them with authority, not your own word. Remember that. Love you, sis. Thank you. Y'all give God a hand of praise for the woman of God. All right. Before you, before you go, and uh, Jerry, Brittany, you guys come over here. Come on, Sister Elsa, before you leave, one second. Yeah, I, I, I felt that, so that's why I was calling you back. Come on, you're going to do it real quick. Come on. Um, I want to say thank you, everybody. I know you guys have been praying because I've been feeling the prayer. And um, I want to share this with you. I was actually um, picked my company was picked. Um, there have been some struggles. There's been a lot going on. But I thank God for perseverance. I thank God for the strength. So we were awarded a grant that I'm going to use to help kids who are struggling with reading. And our goal is to go to different apartments and help those kids bridge the gap. So I wanted to share that with you. The ceremony will be next on the 6th. So I give God all the glory. <laughs> glory to God. 
All right. I'm trying to do this quick. I'm trying to do this quick because our time is far, far spent. Uh, was there anything else specifically that you had a petition before the Lord that we didn't bring up? Say again. Got it. Yeah. That's in there. Somebody say it's in there. And we'll talk. All right, I'm going to get on out of there. Come on over, Greens. Anybody else desire prayer? I'm trying to move quick. Anybody else in the building desire prayer? Come on, y'all. Y'all come get in line for me. We're going to move faster here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You can bring that back up. Bring that back up. Bring that back up. That's good. All right. Um, Jerry, look at your, your wife. Your face off. That's good. Okay. May I let me push No, he believe in you. Huh? Well, one more time. This man that God led to you to marry you believes in you. said, listen, don't let the enemy try to tell you you're going to be a disappointment to him and because of some things you want to get together and some things you want to make solid for him and for Liam. The Lord said, resist that. Because you were trained through the trial to be a runner. What a lot of people don't know is at times when the trial would get too strong for you, your default system was to run. And the Lord said, he's not like that. You don't have to ever feel like you have to run and, and being pretentious and hiding like, baby, I'm confident, I believe. No, you can be vulnerable. And just tell him, baby, I'm a little scared right through here. I, know what I'm trying to do and I know what I'm aiming to do and I'm trying to get all my ducks in a row but I'm a little scared right through here. The Lord said open up to him so that he can pray and heal you in those places where you were scarred for not being heard and not being taken care of. Well you had to take on roles too early in your life that wasn't your responsibility. And created a whole new mentality. God said, I'm going to heal that through this love. And you all are going to be a living example of what it means to trust love. Trust it. Yeah, you're strong. Trust it. So it doesn't block your womb from getting ready for the seed that God wants to impart. Trust it. Release it. Because I see a beautiful little girl coming. Trust it. And let God heal your heart. Come on, Mr. Twister. Let Dr. Gaddy just rest there for a minute. Put your hand in her back. And I, I want you to do this motion. I want you to do this. Just uh-huh. Keep pulling the 
pull all that off and pull all that out. Pull all that off and pull all that out. Put all that off and all that out. Woo! Come on, we coming for years of it. Come on. We coming for years of attack, burdens. Somebody say lift the burdens. Say it again, lift the burdens. At nine, lift it. At the age of 10, lift it. At the Tamo Kambaya Labo, at the age of 13, lift it. Lift that burden off of her. Take all the venomous words and conversation about the lies that were told. Yee! That mess with her confidence. That pushed her into a cycle of wandering and anger. she. Lift it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for deep healing. Deep healing inside of the heart and the mind. That from this day forward, God, she'll never be the same. And that, Lord God, you build strength. You build strength. You build strength for purpose in the heart and the mind of these, your children, for what you've ordained in Jesus' name. Give God a hand of praise for them. Come on. Come on, Mary. Come on. Okay. Oh, my, my, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm telling you, the Lord has blessed your mother with long life. God has granted you the grace to be here to see it with your own eyes. To handle those babies with your own hands. You're going to be here to see it and to experience it. Ooh, lift your hands, mother. A friend of ours Pastor Thomas Land and his wife, the Lord has raised her up many times from an attack the enemy brought against her body. And it got so to the point just where she had believed, I'm not going to live to see my grandchildren. None of her children were even married. And the Lord told me, he said, no, not only are you going to live, I'm going to heal you. And I'm, going to, I'm not going to just heal you, but you're going to see your children get married. And you're going to be able to hold these grandbabies. Somebody say it's already begun. One has already gotten married. And it won't be long before the baby, the first baby is coming. And she's alive right now. Your reward is to see it. Your reward is to experience it. Oh, my, 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 my. And the Lord told me to tell you he's breathing a fresh wind on your lungs. Fresh wind on your lungs. Fresh wind on your lungs. Yes, Holy Ghost. Fresh wind on your lungs. Fresh wind. Somebody just say fresh wind. A fresh wind on your lungs. To experience the favor of God. And to see and to hold and to kiss those grandbabies. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Give God a hand of praise for Mary. Come on, we're moving fast. Come on, who up? Come on, I'm moving. Come on, Albert. <laughs> Edric, put that bottle down and embrace Albert.
the Lord said, I'm embracing you. Those words that the enemy try to bring in your mind that you have failed and you're not getting it done and try to keep discouraging you. The Lord said, I'm erasing that. And I'm bringing peace to your heart again. Because he wants you to rest in his love and do yourself no harm. Ooh. Do yourself no harm. You are loved and you're forgiven. The Lord said, give that love. Give that love. Give that love so into those that you see. Come on. Those small packs. Give it. Watch what the Lord does. The Lord said, you are my minister. Serve that love. Serve that love. I see it. Serve that love. I see it. Serve that love. And the Lord will reward you. Even greater than what you've known. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Somebody bless the Lord. Come on, we're moving fast. Come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, come on, come on. Bring that up again for me. That's good. Is this all right today? Y'all good? Y'all good? Anybody got to leave, be faithful to sow your seed. You're tired, y'all, but if you, if you got to go, I understand. experience a lot crossing over you. What do you mean? The Lord is making you guys a bridge. That's going to be a lot of people crossing over into better because of the both of you. You are about to experience being a repairer of the breach, a restorer of the old ways places. Let's going to use you guys to reconcile some broke relationships. Oh my, yes, see. And that's why the enemy over the last three months has been trying to break y'all up. Because he know how much is riding on this. He sees the anointing of the impact of connecting. So he wants to separate this. So that means y'all got to fight to love. Ooh, 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 ooh. You got to do what? Fight to love. You got to fight to love. Fight. Fight to love. said all that other stuff is taken care of. Y'all better listen to me. This thing about to get so crazy, money ain't gonna be an issue. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Money is not gonna be the issue here. So that means that prayer life daughter, go deeper. Fight for the destiny for your children. Oh! Your mother in the Holy Ghost has been praying a veil over you. The Lord has shown me your mother in the Holy Ghost doing this. Blocking, 
attacks coming after the giftedness of your mind. Oh, the gift of the mind, the gift of the mind, the gift of the mind. Well, so I'm bringing the treasure out and I'm about to awaken the writer. I said, I'm coming after the treasures of what I've stored in you. I'm awakening the writer, the writer, the writer, the the prophetic writings. I'm awakening the words that you hear you see Lord said right, right, right right and with this writing there's an anointing for healing spirit of counsel and direction in the name of Jesus Lord we thank you for the covering over the mind the gift of this mind (laughs) the gift of the warrior in the mind the mighty name of Jesus Lord said he's going to favor your brother again. (laughs) Won't be long before there's another baby coming. He's getting that womb ready again. Oh, and he's protecting her heart. She will not have heart failure on the table. But having this next baby, Lord said I'm going to repair her body. Get her ready for the next gift. Lord said, I'm going to bring your brother in. He's got a religious understanding. The Lord said, I'm about to bring him in. And I see him weeping before the throne. The Lord said, I'm going to raise him up to be a unique evangelist for the kingdom. Father, how we give you praise for it. Father, how we give you praise for it. Father, how we give you praise for it. Jesus. Your will be done. We bless you for it. So just walk in love and obedience. Might it not going to be the issue? Stay faithful to God. Bridge, a lot of crossing, a lot of crossing, but build your strength for it. Got it? Let me move faster. Come on, come on, come on, real quick. Way over and over time. Lord said, call her, the first lady. Call her. She needs encouragement. (laughs) And when you call her and you begin to love on her and encourage her, the Lord said, he's going to drop the prophetic word in your mouth. And it's going to begin to heal. The Lord said, come against the spirit of suicide. I see one of the sons. They're tired. And they want to give up. The Lord said, it was your presence that kept him in a place of not giving up. So this reconnection is about fellowship, not membership. Oh my. This reconnection is about fellowship, not membership. So be a light where the darkness has been trying to creep in. And when he sees you, he's going to open up and tell you some things. The Lord said, walk with him, and he's going to bring healing and deliverance. We give you praise, God, for the strength of the journey in Jesus' name. Come on. 
Everyone else, as you're returning to your seat, I want you to go ahead and prepare your hearts and your minds to sow your seed. Come on, do it right now as you're returning to your seat. Strength for the favor. Because the favor's been spoken even by the last minister that came through, but now God said strength for it. Okay? Because the enemy be trying to come after your strength. But God said, I'm going to renew your actual vital strength. Because this idea, Lord, God, God, I feel like I'm getting old. The Lord said, I'm going to renew strength. Renew strength. Somebody say renew strength. So that you'll be able to accomplish with the favor what must be done with strength. Thank you for touching your kidneys. Thank you for touching the spleen. Thank you for touching her gut system. Thank you for purifying. Thank you that the next doctor's visit, it is well. It is well. It is well. In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord for your sister. Come on very quickly. All right, Lord said, let him pick for you. Because they're going to start lining up. Because the favor of you approaching your season is starting to rest on you. That's why you're glowing. You ain't just cute because you're cute. No, you're getting closer to your season. And it's starting to, you're starting to shine out here and, and the spirits, they see it. And it's a difference. When the season gets on you, you start to lighten. And they can see it. The Lord said, let me pick. And you let the Lord do it. You're going to be safe. Father, we thank you for covering. As you're making her shine, thank you for covering. And anything that's not like you, we drive it away in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Come on, we're moving faster here. It was good to see him, wasn't it? You love him so much. God said, I love him more. So trust me with your brother's life. It's going to be all right. I know you got more than one brother. But you know which one I'm talking about. Okay. God said, I got it. Yes, pray for him. But you ain't got to be ready to fight. And handle nobody. I see that part of your mama trying to come in. We go. But just trust the Lord with his life. He's training him through some things. And he's got to learn some things through faith. Okay. God needs you focus. So you got to be intentional about removing distractions. That you know are distractions. And when you do it. When those moments of those opportunities come, you're clear to make the right choice. Strength for the choice. Focus for the choice. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand of praise for her. Come on. All right. That, uh, that eldest boy of yours, Brandon. Is it Brent or Brandon? Brandon. All right, I see him. Okay. He, he finna come, y'all say it like that whole spirit. Lord say he finna come home. You know how somebody can be in your house and not in your house? You know how somebody can be around you and not be with you? And you saw it right. You saw that spirit on her. I just got to call it for what it is. 
to try to come and steal your baby's heart away and make him into something totally different. The Lord said, I'm building such confidence in him that he's going to rise up and begin to think for himself outside of the influence of the spirit of Jezebel. The Lord said, just be patient before the next baby comes. The Lord said, I'm going to make a whole new man out of him. And you're going to be more than proud of him making a stand, taking a stand to be the man that he should be. This ain't no cuss word, cause like, cause you know mama didn't raise no punk. Yeah, be faithful. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Somebody give me that hand praise, come on. All right, come on, Liam. Thank you, God, for strength, for his athletic ability. Thank you, Lord God, for strength for him being able to hold on to information in class. Bless him with the right kind of friends. Yes. And even in the neighborhood when they go to play, keep him from the mischievous ones that want to get him to get into trouble. Hide him away. Somebody say, hide him away. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all bless the Lord. Minister Tristan. Yeah. <laughs> well, that thing is already on the way. We, we release that over you in prayer. And so, Lord, we thank you for the honor and the favor. The honor and the what? The honor and the favor that is released unto her. The Lord said before the year is out. For the year is out, God, thank you for the manifestation of your favor. And honor resting on her life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dr. Gaddy, everyone standing to your feet because we're going to do offering and dismissal very quickly, very quickly, very quickly, because you already see where you can give and how you can give. Yes. Lord, we honor you and we bless you for life. Somebody say life. And according to your word, life more abundantly. Let the anointing of abundant take over. Let the anointing for abundant take over. Let the anointing for abundant take over. Let the anointing for abundant take, take over, God. We call out our son named Caleb before your throne. Layla, sky. Caden, Layla, Sky, Caden, Layla, Sky, Caden. We left even Regina before you, God. We thank you for your work being done because your word is over it. Now strengthen the heart and the mind of this, your instrument, your child, your daughter, my love, your gift. May she be lifted, God. Strengthen for tomorrow. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you love the Lord, give him a great hand of praise for everything we experienced over the day. Thank y'all for hanging on for overtime. Elder Shelby's coming. Very quickly for the, uh, the gift to receive and then benediction. We're going to let you guys get out of here. Hey, we want to remain standing real quick. We want to pray for our apostle real quick. Amen. Bless God. Amen. So if you guys would just stretch your hands this way, Josh, can you come up here with me? Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus for the gift, Father God, that you have given us, Lord God, in this Apostle Victor Gaddy, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus for the anointing that you have allowed to rest on his life. Now we ask, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that with the same comfort that he has given out, Lord God, that you would teach us how to comfort him, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus that the energy, Lord God, that the prayers that have gone forth, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would teach us how to pray for him, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Fill him up even now, Lord God, from where he has given out. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Amen. 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 I want you guys, amen, to give God, give God a hand of praise. Amen. Are you grateful for what God has done in this place on today? Amen. Has God moved by his spirit on today? Amen. Bless God. I want to encourage you guys, amen, as the people of God, amen, and as people of this house to pray for, to continue to pray for our apostle and his, and his family. Amen. Bless God. Not just praying for where he is right now, but praying for where God is taking him. Amen. Bless God. And in that same manner, as we prepare our hearts to give, and I know you guys have already been preparing for your, preparing your hearts to give, I don't want you to just give for today, but I want to encourage you to give for where we are going. Amen. I want to encourage you to give for where we are going, because guess what, High Calling? We're going somewhere. Amen. 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 We are going somewhere. Amen. Bless God. And although the favor of God rests on this house, amen, and the wind of favor is behind us as a family and as a congregation, guess what? We have a part to do and a part to play. Amen. Bless God. So I want to encourage you to give on today. You see the overhead projection and, and also as well. Remember, and yeah, it may be a stretch. We want to make sure we uh, are in, that we are be a blessing to Trinity. Amen. Amen. Bless God. Apostle mentioned it earlier. We want to make sure that we are a blessing to her. She came today and she poured. Amen. I don't know if y'all felt it, but I felt it. Amen. Trinity, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. For ministering the gift. Amen. Bless God. We were in Arkansas last week and we, there was this guy that was doing praise and worship at this service. And, uh, and when I say he blessed the whole house, he blessed the whole house. Amen. And I thought about while we were in worship today, I thought about the fact that, uh, you know, Trent has come. She's visiting. Amen. Probably didn't come home planning to sing. You know, I might just come home and visit for Thanksgiving. I want to say hi. Amen. Bless God. But she allowed the Lord to use her. And I don't know about y'all, but I was blessed. Amen. Bless God. Amen. I was trying to sing with you, Trent, but, you know, uh, I was trying. You know, the Lord didn't give me all, you know, I could hold a note, but that's it, you know in the background. Amen. Bless God. But <laughs> as you guys can see, here's the ways to give. Amen. If you want to give monetarily, uh, Liam, amen. He's got Amalos back there. I think he's already passed them out. I'm going to ask if everybody would please stand. We're going to get ready to dismiss. Is that on me as well? Yeah, that's on me. Okay. Awesome. Amen. Everybody stand. Amen. As we get ready to get up out of here. Amen. Bless God. Y'all look so lovely. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what you have given us, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, as we leave from this place, but never from your sweet presence, we ask that you will walk with us, talk with us, counsel us, Lord God, guide us and keep us until we meet together again. These are our blessings. We pray in your mighty son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.